Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad to hear on this stormy Thursday morning, April 28th. And I do mean stormy. This rain we've been talking about, I know right now as we speak, Jackson County is getting pounded. Their tornado warning has just ended at 5.30, but I know the weather has been really awful up right up in there. Looked on the radar right before it came on air over in, in West Bay, uh, over south of Vernon, the whole area, all the way almost to the beach is a really strong stormy area coming, coming our way, coming on through West Bay, headed on South Portland and Haven. So be well aware of the weather this morning. It's going to be really stormy. and. Uh, the good news is it's going to work its way on through this morning, and, and the day should end up pretty pretty nice. Temperature right now, folks, it's humid. It's 80 degrees here in Panama City, 81 in Mariana, and 79 down in Apalachicola for our viewers down there. Of course, y'all to get y'all a, a little bit later on this morning. High today is about where it is right now, and low tonight will be 57. And the water temperature is going up one more degrees, folks. It's 76 degrees, our water temp. The rain forecast is still windy. Uh, the great thing about the wind, it keeps the bugs blown away, so you can do some stuff in the afternoon in the yard and all. So the wind is still blowing at 10 to 20 knots. Uh, it sees 2 to 3 near shore and 5, 3 to 5, uh, all the way up to 6 offshore. So again, it's not a good day to be out on the water. Uh, moderate chop on protected waters. Taking a look at the Carl Vernon Marine Specialties Tide Chart. Today, uh, now we're in these deep tides looking at the last week of, of April. And in fact, today and tomorrow, we don't have hardly any tidal flow. So this uh, south wind now is going to keep the uh, water pushed up. Even Apalachicola Bay, St. Joe Bay is going to keep it pushed up from the south to the north. So the water's going to be high but the north end of the bay because we don't have much of a flow bringing it back out. Okay? So I won't go over the time, but you can see we're not much tidal flow. All right, we're going to do a, a sort of a quick look at the weather. Keep your eyes posted, though, on, on the Weather Channel or wherever you watch your weather and uh, make sure you, you're aware of these storms. But the tornado warning has ended up in Jackson County as we speak. Okay, we're going to take our first break and be right back and start a good video for you. At Panama City Golf Carts, we are an authorized EasyGo and Yamaha dealer, ready and waiting to meet your golf cart needs, serving Bay County and surrounding areas since 2001, providing sales, service, parts, and rentals, family owned and operated, selling new and used, Come by and see our collegiate carts. You will find a large selection of accessories, batteries, tire and rim assemblies. Whether in the woods, on the golf course, or cruising through the neighborhood, make Panama City Golf Carts your first stop. One mile west, the Hathaway Bridge. Harold Milling Company, rough and tough dog food. Harold Milling Company builds it. They build hog feed, they build dairy feed, they make chicken feed. They have specialty feed for rabbits. If you got a worm farm, grandmother used to have a worm farm. Look at the Harold Milling Company. You want to go down and get you, the dog's not running anymore. It's all over with. You want to get that 16% uh, and drop down from the 26% protein. You don't want over over to get fat. Harold Milling Company, you can buy it almost any feed store in the Panama City area. Silly Willy Lures, catch fish. Throw it at redfish or speckled trout or mackerel or anything that comes swimming by. Try the pop of those swim jigs, add some shrimp, and you've got a fish catching machine. Silly Willy Spoons and Jigs and Pompano Swim Jigs from Fish on Lures. Check them out at CaptainJoeFishing.com. Good lures, good prices. You'll find them at Better Bait and Tackle Shops. Silly Willy Lures. Sounds silly. Catches fish. When you're looking for sales, parts, and service for your outboard, all in one location, you're looking for BJ's Marine. You're authorized to Hatsu and Nissan dealers. BJ's Marine does it all. They have outboard parts and a service center and used motor sales, too. To Hatsu, reliable, dependable, fuel efficient, and lightweight. To Hatsu Outboards, technology for the next generation. BJ's Marine, 1317 Transmitter Road, since 1991. Uh, welcome back. Glad you're with us on this uh, windy morning. We're going to get into this video pretty fast now because uh, we have a guest here in the studio. So I'm going to introduce you. It's our AP Environmental Science class going out to the uh, Naval uh, Lab over there and helping planting uh, salt marsh grass. So uh, a little four to five minute video and it leads us up into our guest appearance today. So let's go ahead and start rolling this video. I think you'll enjoy the kids working on this. On a field trip, this is an environmental studies class, the AP Environmental Studies class for Mosley High School. 
monster miss Nancy Dow. And we're headed out to where now where are we headed? Sam, keep going back in there. Oh. Catherine and Chelsea and Kaylee. Yeah. Okay, now show me the process and what y'all are doing. Okay. okay. It gets kind of messy. Yeah. Maybe we should do a higher one. Let's do a higher one. Yeah. Okay, so first you gotta feel it, feel it out, make sure it's okay. Okay. Yeah, you gotta slowly dump it out because they're starting to race. This is a fast process. Yeah. You have to get the sand out and then really quickly. Get your plans in there and put the plan down. Yeah. Okay, the plan. What kind of plan is it? I can't remember. He <laughs> can't remember. I can't remember. Okay, I'm glad y'all the AP class. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Alright, ready? I'm gonna get wow, this last right now. Okay, ready? Right there. One, two, three. No. We gotta get, get the sand back in. Put all the sand back in. Got it. Yeah. Okay. We're good. So what's the key to it? Um, you gotta get deep, quick. And get a deep. Make sure it's Make sure not gonna float away high Make enough so it put it Make sure it's yeah. Yeah. Okay. So stay alive. Gotta be strong. You gotta go deep. You gotta go deep. Okay. Tell us what y'all are doing. We planted these three already. Y'all already done those three? Yes, these three. What's the key to this planting? To get, to get, the whole get dirty. <laughs> go deep. Do you remember the name of these? No. Seagrass. It's really fast. It's like soft They're corn. like soft corn seagrass. Okay, all right. <laughs> now, I don't know if you can see it, but these are some piles of oyster shells. They made a couple of piles. These are the beginning of the oyster reef. Okay, and this, of course, attracted the, the small fish and attracted the big fish and all the organisms. So, this is a big project they have going on here. Alright guys, how's it going? Going pretty good. Is this a, sailing so far. Is this difficult or pretty easy? Once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. Tell us each, each one of y'all's exact roles in this process. I am digging the holes to put the plants so you're in. The, you're the digger. I'm the digger. I'm the, me and her both share the, um, the plant. Digging the plant out. Out thing. Y'all the plant, <laughs> the plant getter outer. Yes, like that's what we do. Team situation. Here. And then we spread the water somehow. Okay, ready? Okay, ready? So, you pull out the dirt and I'll put it on. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. <laughs> y'all are cheerleaders. <laughs> Folks, check the teacher is working. Nancy Dow. Nancy, what are you doing? I'm planting sea grasses, sea marsh grasses. Would well, you rather be teaching class right here working in this? This is, I love doing them both. This uh, is I know you do. Out and helping the environment. I know you do. They're doing a good job. They are. They're hard working. <laughs> so you're, shov you're shoveling. I'm making holes deep enough so that we can plant these grasses and get them so they don't get washed away. That's right. Saving our shores. I right, folks, we have a stretch of Bozeman students that come down. Uh, Jennifer Shoemate, what kind of students you have here? We have my marine biology and my biology class here. Well, that's great. I bet they enjoy getting out of school too. Yes, they do. <laughs> this is their second trip over here. The first trip we worked at site three and yeah. planted grass, but we're here. Well, they're working hard. It's a beautiful area out here at the Navy base. They put all the buildings back away from the shoreline of the roadway up here. But notice how the trees are right next to the shore. There's the Hathaway Bridge. And uh, this is what development is about. I think they had the vision to, to understand the build away from the water and save these beautiful trees. Look at those. To me, now, this is something you can't put a price tag on. Right here. Natural. 
Sunset Coastal Grill, located in the heart of beautiful Port St. Joe, was established in 2002 by Patty and Dewey Blaylock as a family-owned coastal restaurant. In Port St. Joe, we meet at Sunset. Sunset's open for lunch and dinner every day of the week. Fresh seafood's brought in daily and served in a variety of traditional and creative ways. Try our award-winning gumbos. Steaks are grilled simple and perfect over an open flame grill. Our homemade soups, sauces, and salad dressings are so popular, we sell them retail. And don't forget, see the sunset at Sunset. Come on down to Blue Water Outrigger, where you'll always find friendly service, fresh and saltwater fishing rods, top of the line men's and women's apparel. Don't forget to pick up your live baits and let us help you with all your outdoor needs. Check out our wide selection of top quality reels and hunting necessities and everything in between. Come see us or order online. We'll be waiting for you right next door to Piggly Wiggly, Port St. Joe. Hey everybody, this is Brad Stevens coming to you from Sunjammers Water Sports on Highway 79. You know us for your fishing kayaks and all your sailing needs. What you may not know is that we stock a full line of inshore and offshore tackle, specializing in the Captain Joe fish on lures. We stock his grouper baits, his SS minnows, his shredders, along with all of your gulp baits, Joe jigs, the edge hook, your U-Pro rods, and live bait. Come see us at Sunjammers Water Sports, 315 North Highway 79. You know what folks like best about Corum Steak and Eggs? Just about everything. Willie and Linda Corum have been in business a long time. They know how to take care of their customers with great food and great service. Better than being at home. You don't have to do the dishes. It's all good, but be sure and check out the Heavenly Hash. That's what Corum Steak and Eggs is famous for. Corum Steak and Eggs, 804 South Pendle Parkway. Open 24-7. Welcome back, folks. Special guest this morning, Linda Fishu. Hi there. Good to see you today. It's great to see you, Winston. Teach the science out of Gulf Coast. Tell yes, us, tell the folks what you do. Well, I teach biology, environmental science, and marine biology at Gulf Coast. Been there about 16 years. Love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, you get some of uh, all kind of students. I guess you enjoy seeing these students working. And, that was wonderful yeah. to see. Yes, and you know I try to encourage anybody who wants to come out and help protect the environment because it's so important. It, it is important. So what we're going to talk about today though is our St. Andrew Bay Aquatic Preserve. Right. Okay. And that's a big long term and, and we actually have had it since 1972. I was doing some research on it last night. So, But tell the folks what the St. Andrew Bay Aquatic Preserve is. Right. Well, there are aquatic preserves all over the state of Florida, and specifically there's one for St. Andrew Bay, but also St. Joe Bay. St. Joe Bay has right. one. Yep. So um, this is an area that has been designated as probably some of the most essential fishery habitat. And so in 1972, people decided we want to protect this because tourism is so important to us, recreational fishing is so important to us. Okay. Now we're going to take a look at where it's located here in St. Andrew Bay. Now this is of course, you see right in the center of it is Shell Island, so that, that shaded in area. So tell us about what all goes on in this area, okay? Sure. Well, this area is about 25,000 acres, so it's a relatively large uh, area. And you can see um, Shell Island there the Shell and, of Island. course, the, the opening to the Gulf of Mexico. And people may not realize this, but a lot of larval fish come in from the Gulf of Mexico and settle out in the seagrass beds. You were telling this area right here. Right there, yeah, critical. right by Alligator Point. Very yeah. critical. I mean, folks at NOAA do research and they um, constantly see a lot of snapper uh, settling out there. So these seagrass beds are critical seagrass beds to protect. And, um, you know, if we lose the uh, offices that actually uh, protect these areas, well, it's not going to be good for our tourism or our recreational fishing. Yeah. I, I was looking, I had an older map originally because it had the old pass was still open on it too, but mm -hmm. it, that, that is now closed in, but that whole area, even offshore, I, I don't know if people understand the, the how the, the species like flounder and all go out and then and the larva and all work their way back in. Right. And that, that, is, that and they all come, it all comes in that area. Right. And I, I mean, our estuaries serve as a nursery ground, right, for the little tiny little larvae that come in and settle out there and then grow to be bigger fish to then go offshore where we then catch them and we like to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> that we do. Uh, in fact, we, uh, last week the, the governor was able to uh, catch some really nice fish, uh, redfish, not too far from there. And one of the reasons was because our area is so well protected and, and yes. we, we monitored it, monitored it so well. So you, you do, I know with your classes and all, you do a lot of monitoring mm -hmm. and, and with the 
RMA and all. So tell us some of the things y'all monitor. Well, in um, RMA, we do the water quality monitoring, which is so important because uh, without good water quality, we're not going to have good seagrasses or fisheries, any fisheries. Um, we also do the seagrass monitoring, uh, the scallop monitoring project. Mm -hmm. We do shoreline restoration like you saw in that video. Mm -hmm. uh, so we do a lot, a whole host of um, activities, especially the turtle watch too. Yeah, and I was going to mention on turtle watch. How, uh, how are the turtles doing over the years? I mean, we're we hanging in there with them? Or? Yes, yes. I mean, you know, there's ups and downs as far as yeah. the total number of turtles that come onto the beach uh, to lay eggs. Uh, but that, that you see that everywhere, yeah. you know. Uh, some years, you know, more uh, turtles coming on than others. But, you know, our area is, is a good area for sea turtle nesting. And it's another ecotourism, well, you know. I, yeah, that's true. And people just love to see that when, when it happens. But it all, to me, it's always been like a like a big puzzle that just all fits together. Right. The, the health of the water and, and the seagrass. Man, I, yes. I love fishing, and I know uh, in St. Joe Bay that that grass down there it looks so healthy and all. And then sometimes oh, St. Joe Bay has the one, some of the most uh, awesome seagrass beds. I mean, I'm a seagrass uh, biologist, and I just love uh, snorkeling in St. Joe Bay and just looking at the seagrasses. I'm supposed to be scalloping, but I don't get that many scallops because I'm so interested in the seagrasses. Yeah, I know. Well, maybe answer. I've always been puzzled by this. Why are some of the grass like this tall and some of the grass like this tall? You know, there actually are sea urchins that will eat uh, the grass. And I have been out in the bay, and it is so funny to see an area that looks like it's been mowed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's the sea urchins coming in. That's just, what's going on mm -hmm. then. They're, they're mowing it. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> okay, I learned something today already. Uh, and, and I know, it, I'll, and I hate to see it, I know you do too, a lot, a lot of times you have this beautiful bed of seagrass and then you see a motor that's cut through uh, it. And that, what that does, now I know it cuts it up and destroys it. How long does it take to, for that gap to sort of close up? Yeah, and that that is a great question. It's about these prop scars that we yeah, create when yeah. we're boating in too shallow water and we're not lifting our um, yeah. boat motors out up high enough, which of course is not good for our boat motor either. No. But um, down in the Keys, it takes about seven to 10 years we don't actually know how long it takes. It could be twice as long up here. That's yeah. a, a project I want to work on. See, that would be interesting mm -hmm. if you could maybe just scope out an area and, and yes. get a little square. And, 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 and we're going to do that. Good. Yeah. Very, very good. I know uh, uh, when, when people go out and, and, and scallop and they're, they're thinking about, you know, the scallop themselves and they're actually not, uh, not thinking about the water and, and, and the tide goes out. And that's the biggest thing that causes when the tide goes right. out and they're finishing scallop and oh no, and then it, they, it's shallow so they take off and zzz. Of course, you could just push your boat into deeper water, right? Yeah. There's simple things we can do. Lift up your boat motor, you yeah. know, get a push pole, you know. Yeah, so. well, we're going to, okay, we've got a lot more to talk about. <laughs> this this, this uh, San Andreas Bay Aquatic Preserve is really special. Uh, I want to go ahead. I didn't get a chance to do this. We're going to do a, uh, this giveaway because my phone jammed yesterday, but it's on now. And what we're going to do, uh, while we take this break now and come back with Linda, we're going to give away this pen, nice pen cap. We're going to give an express lane coffee mug along with free refill and a panhandle outdoors decal to go on the back of your car or truck. These three items we're going to give away during this commercial break. Okay, so we'll take a break now. So call me. I'm going to take a call. But tomorrow now, we've got a big giveaway tomorrow, and we'll talk about that when we come away. We'll come back. Be right back. For 26 years, Mills Heating and Air has been serving the Emerald Coast from Navarra Beach to Bay County, Crestview to the Pudiac Springs with residential and commercial accounts. Seven days a week, we provide quality service and installation, in-home evaluations, air quality, and duct cleaning. We offer free estimates, convenient financing, and preventative maintenance agreements. For lower bills, call Mills, 234-8177. Your Panhandle Carrier Dealer. This is the new Kubota Grand L30. It has more horsepower, more features, even more metal. It also has something I've never seen in a compact tractor before. A brain. Look, a fully computerized instrument panel with an all-digital display. Well, what's it telling you now, Jerry? Uh, get back to work. Smart tractor. Brains and brawn. The new Kubota Grand L30. My name's Captain Rick Corley. I'm a SAMS accredited marine surveyor, NAM certified marine surveyor, and I am a certified marine investigator. Been surveying since 1969. Was taught by my father, who is the oldest longest practicing marine surveyor in the world. We do all types of survey, commercial or pleasure, steel, aluminum, fiberglass, wood, makes no difference. Give us a call at 850-527. 
5287 or visit us online. We'd appreciate your business. When it comes to the shooting sports, the headquarters for this area for over 57 years has been CNG Sporting Goods. When you need firearms for hunting, target shooting, self-protection, home protection, or if you're a gun collector, CNG's friendly, knowledgeable sales staff is ready to help you make the right selection. CNG buys, sells, and trades guns. CNG will buy one gun or a collection. Look over this area's largest selection of quality firearms. CNG Sporting Goods, home of the experts. Oh, welcome back. Sitting here with Linda Fitzhugh, and you actually now have your PhD. So, we, uh, tell us how you got your PhD. What, what is in? I mean, we're talking to an expert here, folks. Well, I uh, studied oceanography at uh, FSU, and the focus of my research was looking at water quality and the seagrasses in St. Andrew Bay. So that, that's great. I really appreciate you getting up this early coming on the show oh, like this. this is wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, listen, let's do our express lane fishing game forecast for today. Our times we're looking at uh, this morning. Uh, let's see. I have my chart right here. Today is Thursday, the 28th. We're looking at 9.21 a.m. And somehow, you know, there it is. It's 9.21 9 a.m. and then 9.41 tonight. So that is correct. 9.21 a.m. after this bad weather gets out of here. And maybe find a good place to go do some fishing today. Uh, we'll get out to the doors and do something. Brought to us by Express Lane, American-owned and operated. Also, uh, I want to uh, congratulate our winner, Colin from Weewa. We have Reba Chance watches the show every day, enjoys the show. Appreciate that, Reba. You have won this all, and you thought you were going to win it. Is that I know. I was. Thanks, Reba. I thought uh, I was getting <laughs> she all this thought stuff. She was going to win all this, but uh, <laughs> we'll get you something, okay? <laughs> all right. So let's get back to what we're talking about. We're talking about a lot of good news about our healthy bays. Mm -hmm in St. Joe Bay and Choctahatchee Bay and Apalachicola Bay. Those are good healthy bays. Oh, wonderful, yes. And, uh, but now we're going to talk a little bit about the bad news right now. So let's, let's share with the folks what's going on. Right. Okay? So the bad news is right now, um, in an effort to save money, um, the state legislatures are talking about closing six of the aquatic preserve offices. Uh, that would include St. Andrew Bay, Choctahatchee Bay, and uh, the St. Joseph Bay. Um, mm. And these offices, they employ, these six offices employ about 23 people. So sometimes people say, oh, that's not so many yeah. uh, folks, right? But the office in Milton that um, takes care of St. Andrew Bay, they actually have half a million dollars in restoration grants yeah. that they will not be able to use if this office closes. And they're actually hiring people to help them with this grant. So it's not just the three people in that specific office that would be affected. It's all this grant money that's coming in yeah. to do the restoration yeah. in this area that well, would just be lost. It's funny how it worked out like this. I, I can't take credit for planning this show, but with the, with the kids planting that grass, I, that grass there was, was bought with a grant. Mm -hmm. And, and it, was, it right. was actually raised over there around Milton, Pensacola, and brought it over here. And, and all of the it goes along even with our seal seal uh, season all all this is grant money and there's a, just a small group of people that write these grants to get that mm -hmm. so now they're not talking about closing those offices right so and if the office is closed that grant money yeah. is gone it's lost and and not only the grant money is lost and the other jobs that would uh, come from that but the actual projects that would involve yeah. protecting the environment and, so. and, and the monitoring so much monitoring mm -hmm. that y'all do uh, and, and and we're just getting into scholar monitoring in st andrew bay and and I, we've helped on that, and that's just a lot of fun. But so, what can people do? What can our viewers do? Because we have some pretty loyal viewers. So yes, what would be really wonderful is to write your state legislators. I mean, the House has already um, looked at their appropriations bill, but the Senate is still talking about it, and they're voting next week. So time is of the essence. Mm -hmm. We really need to contact our state legislators now yeah. to say we're not interested in closing these six uh, aquatic preserve offices. Yeah. Um, we have some information on our website for RMA. Okay, and, and this is our this is our uh, the address right here: mm -hmm. www.s St. Andrew Bay Resource Management Association mm -hmm. org. Right. And uh, that has all the information. Yes, on there. well, it has even a sample letter. If people are interested in just seeing the letters that we wrote, they yeah. can copy those letters. They could take bits and pieces out. There's um, so there's several pieces of information there. Plus, there's information on who the state legislators are yeah. at BayVotes.org. And, and tell them the governor called a lot of fish down here last week. Yeah. And the reason he called a lot of fish because we have such a great base. So put that in there too. Right. I don't know if you have that in form later, but that, that's what I would write. We didn't write that in there, but okay. that would be a great yeah, thing yeah. to and add. Seriously, I mean, people want to come down and use our area. Mm -hmm. Including the governor and everybody else, that want to come down and use our area and then leave. But they got to understand too; they got to help us take care of it. That's right. They, they really do. Uh, you, you're an outdoor lady too. Tell us some of the things you enjoy doing. Oh uh, well, 
course, I just love camping and hiking and yeah. biking and uh, I love doing research outside. I know that may sound strange, but I mean, it's just so yeah. much fun to study the environment as well and, and get students involved and the community. I mean, yeah. all these projects that RMA does, um, the monitoring projects involves community volunteers. And without our community volunteers, we would not be able to do all the work that we do. And if someone wants to volunteer, they could get a hold of the same organization oh, and yes. call and, and just mm -hmm. say, I, I know when we went out last, last spring on, on that uh, scallop, putting scallops out by the airport and all, there were a couple of people there just volunteering their mm -hmm. time. And, 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 that, and they got a free boat ride. And right. Got some fun. And, s and some people volunteer the use of their boat and mm -hmm. will drive us around. And it's without our volunteer base, we would not be able to yeah. do all the work we've been doing for the last 20 years. So. Yeah. What do you think of, oh, and also your husband's a fish biologist too. He so is a fisheries know, biologist. Mm -hmm. know a lot so we of course board. really, yes, we love to just spend any yeah. free time that we have outside. <laughs> does he enjoy fishing? Does he have yes, he does. <laughs> and, you well, know, he, he has an unfair advantage. He knows what the fish is <laughs> going to do. <laughs> yeah. um, and, you know, but we were talking about the aquatic preserves and we were talking about tourism and uh, fishing, but it's also important for the diving industry because yeah. offshore, you know, all those people are diving and that's part of the aquatic preserves as well. And do you do much, do you, can you do much monitoring out there? Have you been able to do much monitoring? I haven't personally done monitoring in the deep water. I, I, yeah. I'm more of an estuarine biologist, so I yeah. focus just on the estuaries. Overall, if, if you were, I'm going to put you on the spot now. If, okay. if, you, if we go, for, I'm just making this up. We go from a one to 10, would 10 being the most healthy base, base situation you can have and one being the worst polluted situation. How would you rank our, our bays here? Yeah, I would say uh, for St. Joe Bay would be a 9, 10, and St. Andrew Bay really would be like an 8, 9. Okay. And that's because we have a lot more um, industrial uh, Wastewater yeah. getting into our bay yeah. that St. Joe Bay doesn't have. Yeah. So that, that's interesting. And about and Choctaw and Apalachicola is a different kind of bay because you have you have such two two big rivers coming oh, into it. Oh right, right. You know, Apalachicola has such a huge freshwater uh, influence. Our bay is very salty. Uh -huh. We have a lot of marine um, uh, organisms in there. In fact, more than what is in Indian River Lagoon. Really? Yeah. So right. we actually are very healthy. It's just that we have a little bit more development around our bay yeah. than St. Joe Bay does. Yeah. Well, uh, what's, uh, uh, well, we're running. I look here. We're running uh, out of time. But we have all kind of. You have, you're gonna have to come back on. Okay, I'll come and, back on. We can talk about RMA maybe yeah. and some of the projects. Yeah, that we and do. some of that. And get your husband. Give us some fishing tips. And we'll okay. Little, we got to get out. Of here. Linda, thank you so much. Well, thank great, you. Great Winston. having you. All right, folks. Uh, Y'all do something good for somebody today. Do something outdoors, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle on Tours with Winston Chester. Panhandle on Tours features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle on Tours.